All right, all right. Here we go. What's that a cock off, boss? What's happening? Johnny Long, I'm in an almost deep post. How do you get that? All right, so a couple days ago, I basically had a wonderful base come in. Um, vintage 1989 Cubiki. Cubiki. And I listed it on the Cubiki site. And I got some wonderful comments. And a lot of guys like, oh! What happened? Look, but I may also made a comment is like the war paint on this thing was absolutely beautiful. So some bases you get in your possession and they are mojoed. A lot of you don't understand what that means, mojoed. Mojoed to me is when you pick up a bass or when you hear somebody else play that bass that, that, that you never heard before and you can hear the hear the mojo in it, um, and then you get your hand on that same bass. Here's here's the issue. The issue is you don't want to change them. I'm, I'm speaking from my point of view. All right, look, everybody else in here. So it's my point of view. So okay, so what I did, what what, I, so mojo to me is like you don't want to change that mojo. All you want to do is. You want to conserve the mojo, but you want to fix the issue. All right, so when this base came in, I want you guys to look at it. All right, this is the, this is the base. All right, so this is an 89. Am I right, 89 or 86? 89. This is an 89 Cubiki. All right, when it came in, it had major damage. Um, the neck was majorly bad. Um... The electronics were majorly bad. When I say majorly bad, it was majorly bad. So, and then uh, I'm still missing the knob. So I, I, I contact Cubiki and they're going to send me another knob. All right. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to hurt the mojo that's in this base. So basically all I did was very clean it because it had 30 something years of, of funk on it. So I didn't want to put that kind of funk on my hand, but I wanted the base to be conserved. When the base came in, it, the bottom of the base were gone. It was out. You saw the video. It was out. So look, now I do custom work at this shop. All right. So my paint jobs are amazing. Um, my repair, I think is amazing. But with this base, I didn't want to change anything. I didn't want to do anything extravagant. I could have took the whole base down to the to the skin and then put a new paint job on it and it looked like brand spanking new. They wanted to do that because that would have killed the mojo. What I did is I took a block of wood, the same kind of wood that's in it, and actually put that piece of wood in there and put very little um, putty in it, very little, just enough to hold, just enough glue and putty to hold that piece of, metal, piece of wood that I put in there. And I didn't want to make it beautiful so you can see where the wood were. You know, I didn't want to make this beautiful. I really didn't. So I wanted to to kind of throw a little bit of something on it so it looked, you know, because I, I had to sand a great deal of it to get that block in there and putty and stuff like that. So this is what I did. So I took a, a spray can, right, a paint, and I primed it. I put a little design on it. I don't know if you can see it. I put a little design on it. And then I took a spray can, painted it with the primer and paint, and then took a nut while it was still wet. Took another one, sprayed over it, and let it drip. And came up to that kind of design. It's so cool. But look, here's the cool part. It still got mojo in it, and it still got all the, all the war paint. You still got all the war paint. That's why I love you. Listen, this thing is a beast, and it's good. All right, so we're going to hear it. So the electronics, I had to change, go inside the electronics and rewire stuff, and then I had to put a new input jack in it, tube jack in it, and like I said, I had to clean it up. I had to go inside all the gears, reor them, reoil them. I said reoil them. What, what is reoil? 
I had to re-oil them and making sure they was working correctly. And a new setup. And a um and you know, just make sure all the all the stuff. Oh, I had to put new screws in it because it all when I got the base, the screws were falling out. So I had to put new screws in it to hold the um bridge on. Uh a whole lot of stuff. So anyway, today we're gonna come through my vintage SWR LA Series 12. All right. It ain't got no hone in it. When I tell you it ain't got no hone in it, it ain't got no hone in it. <laughs> a lot of people are like, what's a hone? To all you eloquent folks, it's a horn. It doesn't have a horn in it. But to us country folks, it ain't got no hone in it. So we're going to plug it on up. All right, so I should have plugged it up before. That, that sounded crazy. So I, I got the amp set almost to D10, all right? So I, I'm going to sit. I'm, I want to sit up here. I'm trying to sit high. I'm going to put something else in the seat so I can sit high enough so you guys can see it. That means I got to sit on stuff because my seat won't go up that high. All right, so it's, it's got the basic. This is the six-way switch. I still have to learn what all those things are. I think some of them like active, more active, mid cut, passive, less passive. I, I don't know. Look, all I know they working. That's all we need to know. So we'll turn it on, turn the bass and the treble off, and we're gonna start at the very beginning. All right? There's the first setting. The strings are underneath the frets. The strings are underneath the fret. That's how I love them. Rear pickup. in on the first setting so i just realized that the top thing is the treble no the bottom is the treble and the top is the bass i just realized that i i didn't know so we're gonna dial it we're gonna dial the treble to d10 got a little notch in it so <laughs> quarters <laughs> it ain't got no hone in it y'all it ain't got no hone in it so let's dial the bass to three quarters I mean half D10 Vicky and get a book so that I can know exactly what's going on. But it sounds faster to me. And uh all right, next setting. That sounds like a big cut to me.
Next setting. I think I'm still in passive because I don't hear anything happening. And if it is, I don't hear it. <laughs> Say, look, and if it is, I don't hear it. And then that's the last setting. Then I go back to the beginning again. Everything wide open, check it out. Second setting. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, basically, I love this bass. <laughs> I love the bass. I mean, it's, it, it does what it's supposed to do. But anyway, I just want to. I just want to do this short video, you guys, so you guys can see exactly. No more at the back. <laughs> Look, and here's the back of it. You know, still got all the war paint, everything. All I, I, I just cleaned it up really well. Cleaned the neck up really well. And this, I, I'm gonna tell you, man. I this thing got mojo. There's some bases that got mojo, and there's some bases that don't have mojo. That joint right there got mojo. And it's got a lot of it. Oh my God, that thing has mojo. It may be beat the snot. I said the snot. It may be beat the snot, but this joke got mojo. And it's got a lot of it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Anyway, guys, thank you for coming by the Hobo Depot. Checking me out. I, I Once again, I want, you say, I want to say to you guys, please keep praying for the Hobo Depot, my family, the Queen and I. Um, definitely we pray for you guys every morning because that's what we do. That's what we do. And um, hopefully you guys are, are really blessed and having a great day. And, and keep sharing, keep liking, keep hitting the button, keep uh, subscribing, and tell another folks. This joint is crazy. This joint is, oh my God, this thing is right. If you heard this, do that, and ain't got no hone in it, shut it, caca. Oh my God, oh my God.